Good morning. Welcome to worship. It's the third Sunday after Epiphany. Special welcome to any visitors who might be with us this morning. We're glad you've joined us. Hello to everyone on the live stream. Good morning to you all as well. Um, a very special welcome to the Reverend Brian Holbin, who is our supply pastor this morning. Brian and I have figured out that he was here many, many years ago on a Sunday that Pastor Eichhorn woke up with a stomach bug. <laughs> and so um, that's a fond memory of Trinity, isn't it? Um, but in any case, um, he and Pastor Eichhorn knew each other. They grew up together at St. Timothy's Lutheran Church in Salisbury in Allentown. So it's wonderful to have you with us this morning, Brian. Thanks for leading us in worship. Pastor Spencer is um, in California. Uh, many of you know his uncle Art passed away, and Art was a big-time surf photographer. Um, and he actually had a, um, an obituary in the New York Times and um, is like one of the preeminent photographers of surfers. Um, so today, they're having his funeral. It's going to be on a beach um, between San Diego and Los Angeles. And um, so they're going to have like this beautiful time of remembrance. And then they're going to have what surfers call a paddle out, which is such a lovely thing. If, if I were a surfer, I'd want one of those. But, but what happens is everyone gets on their surfboards, their kayaks, or wakeboards, or whatever. And they, they paddle out and create this giant circle in the sea as a way of memorializing the person who has passed away. Um, because uh, his uncle Art was such a big deal, Spencer is expecting lots of people there and was a little nervous about um, you know, his role in all of this, but I'm, I'm sure he'll be fabulous and he'll be back this week. Um, so please keep him in your prayers this afternoon um, as, he, as he leads the paddle out. There are just a couple of announcements um, before we begin worship. Uh, the first is that next Sunday, worship will be at 9 a.m. It's annual meeting Sunday. Um, in years past, this would elicit sort of a groan and a, an eye roll, but I, I really have come to find our annual meetings of late have been really, really wonderful experiences. Um, you know, we have some serious business to conduct, of course, and voting on budgets and new council members and all of that, but there's always a, a, a beautiful sense of joy and discernment and care in all of that. So I hope you will join us. Um, that will follow the service. The service is at 9. The annual meeting should begin around 10 a.m. And then the following Sunday, um, there's a sign-up posted. We are actually observing our 260th birthday here at Trinity. Um, and I was saying to the 8 o'clockers, many of you will remember in, in 2013 when we had the 250th, I have vague recollections of it because I had pneumonia and a pinched nerve and was on so many drugs for that 250th anniversary <laughs> service that I, it was a, a wave of albuterol and the Holy Spirit that got me through. But it was, it was a really wonderful, wonderful service. Um, we're, we're going to have something a little bit more modest for this year, but it's, it's a wonderful occasion. Can you believe that this church was founded before the Revolutionary War? Trinity Lutheran Church is older than the United States of America. So I, I think that's a marvelous thing, and here we are, um, 260 years later. So that's something definitely to celebrate. So please sign up for the potluck, and we're going to just have a wonderful time. I believe the kids have something special planned for us, and it's just going to be a, a really wonderful morning. So that's the next couple weeks at Trinity, um, and I think that's all I need to tell you. So thank you. I'm going to turn the service over to Pastor Holman. Good morning. Actually, after the first uh, worship service, I was talking with some people in the fellowship hall, and they think they remember me being here uh, right before COVID started, that the call I got from Chris Kaikorn uh, was at that time. I'll be honest, I don't remember. I do remember I was told that I had gotten that call that morning that Chris couldn't make it a Sunday morning. Could I go right away and fill in? Uh, so it's nice to be here. It's even nice to be called back. So I guess it went okay. <laughs> the only thing I really remember, honestly, is I, had a, I parked my motorcycle in the back corner over here and I couldn't figure out how to get in the building because I had no idea how you were set up here. You can't tell from the road. You're, the room's inside this big building. You can't tell. So that's my memory of this place. Uh, it's good to be back. 
although I can't remember the first time. So, <laughs> um, I have uh, been a chaplain at Lehigh Valley Hospital for 21 years. I just retired in the uh, middle of November, so about two months ago. I also was a pastor, a full-time pastor, for 12 years at a church that's probably about 30 miles from here. Um, and for the last year and a half, ever since the congregations opened up again, you know, after COVID, uh, uh, you're about the 17th church that I've been at to substituting in the last uh, year and a half. So I know, I know, uh, just forgot his name. David. David, thank you. Poor David has to listen to my sermon twice. So I'll try to change it up a bit. It went pretty well in the first, uh, in the first service. I have a, a developed a new way of preaching, which is to preach without a manuscript, and often to come into the congregation and do it not from the pulpit, but from among you. So that's probably what I'll do again today. With uh, substituting at 70, 17 different congregations in the last year and a half, I can tell you every congregation does it differently. So part of the anxiety that I have to deal with is, am I standing in the right place? Am I saying what I'm supposed to be saying? Or I'm not used to working with an assistant, so if I... I if I step on her toes, it's because I didn't realize that it was her line, not mine. So, Today we're going to talk about the call, the call. I had my own call from God. God said, Brian, Brian, I want you to go into our churches and do some stand-up. I said, I said, what? You want what? He said, you know, make them laugh. So that's, uh, I'm f that was a joke, people. That was... <laughs> no, but we're going to talk about the call, the call in our sermon, because in today's uh, gospel lesson, we have the calling of the first disciples by Jesus. But the Bible is full of call stories. It's just replete with call stories from the beginning to the end. So we'll talk a little bit about that um, it's good to be back. <laughs> so please join with me in the confession and forgiveness of sins, which is found on the first page of our bulletin, Confession and Forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who makes all things new and whose mercy endures forever. I'm not used to this. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin. Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess that they're wrapped in our sin and cannot free ourselves. We do not practice your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the world you so love, forgive us that we may reconcile to one another. The glory of the Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ, our Savior.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. reading from Isaiah. There will be no gloom for those who are in anguish. In the former time, the Lord brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. 
The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? reading from 1 Corinthians. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported by me, to me by Chloe's people, that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 4, verses 12 through 23. In this segment of scripture, this story, this pericope, Jesus begins his public ministry shortly after John the Baptist is imprisoned by Herod. He proclaims the nearness of God's reign and calls four fishermen to be his first disciples. St. Matthew writes, Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. 
He left Nazareth and was made his home in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulon and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulon, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and for those who sat in the region in sh the shadow of death, light has now dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As, we walked by the sea of Galilee, or as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is also known as Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. And he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, good morning once again. I think we mentioned already that I knew Chris Eichhorn. Uh, we grew up together. He was a few years older than me, uh, but he was the age of my oldest brother. We grew up at St. Timothy's Lutheran Church in West Allentown. Uh, his younger sister, Brenda, was in my confirmation class. I don't know if you know it or not, but their father was a Lutheran minister, George Eichhorn. He was a chaplain at Muhlenberg College. St. Timothy's was very close to uh, Muhlenberg. St. Timothy's has a history of producing ministers. In the first 25 years of its existence, it produced six ordained ministers. Now, you don't know this, because hopefully I've evolved a little bit. I no longer get scared when I'm doing a sermon, but there was a time early on when I admit it, I used to get scared, very self-conscious, and I forget what I was going to say. There was this one incident when I was still a student learning how to preach where I went to a congregation and I got through a sermon halfway through, I forgot everything I was going to say. Even though I had a manuscript, it didn't help because I didn't know where I was in the manuscript. I wasn't following it. Well, I stopped. My mouth got really dry. I started shaking and I started sweating. I started sweating. At the end of the service, I was so embarrassed. You know how we shake hands when people are leaving? I apologize to every one of them. I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. Suddenly, I started shaking, and I, had, uh, I started sweating, and I forgot absolutely everything I was trying to say. Well, two women came up to me in line together, and they were laughing. And I apologized. I said, I don't know what happened. I'm sorry. They looked at each other and started laughing even harder. They said, you know, Brian, you know why we're laughing? I said, no. They said, we're going through menopause right now, so we know exactly what you're going through. <laughs> I told that story to the Senate, and they sent me to Chris Eichhorn. <laughs> now, do you remember, I think he was a professor also, right? I think he was, right? He taught preaching, right? 
So I would go over to his living room and we would practice. So I told this morning's group, if I do a bad job, you need to call Chris Eichhorn and blame him. Because he didn't do his job. No. I've also learned to use comedy in my sermons. Because it loosens people up. I was only joking a little bit about the call to stand up. My call story actually involves God calling me by name and saying, Brian, Brian, go out, go out amongst my people and tell them I love them. Tell them I love them. Now, I mentioned to you that from St. Timothy's, we produce six ordained ministers. When I went off to seminary, I remember one of our professors saying on the first day of seminary, most people that are coming to us have sense, some sense of God in their life. But it's this guy for which there is much confusion. I think you understand what I'm trying to say. Most people have some idea there must be a creator somewhere. This world is so intricate and so delicate, there had to be a creator. So they have a sense of God, but they come often not knowing exactly what to make of this guy. So we spend our four years talking about that guy in all of our classes, meeting that guy on the road. Now, ordained ministry means we are set aside, called and set aside. For what? To proclaim the gospel the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and forgiveness in his name. In the Lutheran tradition, the call not only goes out to people that go into ordained ministry, but we learn that the call actually comes to all Christians. Martin Luther used to talk about the priesthood of all believers. We should all be, come to the point when we too can tell others about this guy. Our, our call story begins with baptism. In baptism, we are called and claimed by God, by Christ. And we preach in his name, or we teach. Now, the Bible is full of call stories from the beginning to the end. The first call story actually is in Adam. Well, no, I, I got to take that back. I got to correct myself. Didn't God call the world into being and all the things? I forgot that in my first service. The second call is to Adam and Eve. And if you know the story of Genesis in the Garden of Adam and Eve, what did God do at the end of every evening? He came to walk with Adam and Eve and asked them how their day was going. The one day when he came into the garden, he could not find Adam. He's calling to them. They are hiding because now they have sinned. The Bible talks about all kinds of stories, like Abraham's call story, the call story of Moses, some of the prophets. In the New Testament, we get into the calling of the disciples, but before we even get there, we're talking about the call story of John the Baptist. And we're talking about the call story of Christ himself which starts at his baptism. Do you remember after 
He was baptized by John in the Jordan, and the Spirit descended upon him as a dove, and the voice of God saying, this is my Son in whom I am well pleased. What happened to Jesus? Do you remember? Where did he go? It said he was cast into. He was cast into the wilderness, remember? To be tempted at 40 days and tempted. So even the Son of God was not quite ready. The ministry began when he came out. So maybe he had a moment when he forgot what he was trying to say. I don't know. Disciples are not born, they are made. Which, why is it, it, it is important for you to remember that you too are called from your baptism to live out your baptism. What does that mean? That means to support each other in love, to teach each other about Christ, to spread the gospel, to encourage one another. This morning, I don't know how I've done. Remember I told you, if I've done a bad job, call Chris. It's his fault. Amen.
called together to follow Christ Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Make your church one in purpose, proclaiming the message of the cross. Help us to work together across differences. Energize ecumenical partnerships, including the World Council of Churches and Lutheran World Federation. Merciful God, you receive our prayer. prayer. We rejoice at the bounty of your creation. Fill the land and sea with your abundance. Bless harvests in the southern hemisphere and fallow fields in the northern hemisphere. Equip farmers to till and keep the earth sustainably. Merciful God, receive our prayer. prayer. In Christ, your reign comes near and calls all to repentance. Break the rod of the oppressor in every nation. Dispel the shadow of death in places of war and persecution. Grant us leaders who lift the yokes that burden those in need. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Be a stronghold for those in trouble and a rock for all who are afraid. Rouse communities to care for neighbors who need shelter, are facing maltreatment, are isolated and lonely. We pray especially for Amanda, Bruce, Dick, Roy, David, Orain, Jerry, Barbara, Dorothy, and Claudia. Be with those we now, now name, either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Merciful God, sustain the ministries of this congregation and all churches in this community, including the Dryland United Church of Christ, St. John's Lutheran and United Church of Christ, and Holy Family Catholic Church. Nurture each congregation's unique witness to your presence. Foster mutual respect. Inspire our cooperation in loving our neighbors. Merciful God, we praise you for the faithful who have gone ahead of us, both famous and unknown. Help us to leave our nets and follow, and bring us with them to the fullness of your promise of eternal life. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We bring to you our needs and our hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. The peace of the Lord be with you all.
let us pray. Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and when we let Christ go free, receive these offerings and thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the church choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Amen. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks, and then he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave, all, gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, you will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of our Lord. Now and forever. Amen. Come and taste the joy of God.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. Amen. The God who is faithful bring forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod. Bless, strengthen, and uphold you today and always. Amen. It's been nice being here again. <laughs> Go in peace. Remember your baptism. Follow the way of Jesus. Thanks be to God. <laughs>